hashtag at its very simplest is a way of organising and amplifying conversations that happen on social media. It's been popularised by Twitter, also plays out across other platforms, Facebook and Instagram. But the origins of the hashtag, it goes back way further than you might think. It actually goes back all the way to the 1970s. And the origins of the hashtag are very geeky. Hashtags originally were part of programming language, so computer programmers were figuring out a way to group topics together. The great thing about a hashtag is, uh, is that it's kind of two-sided. It can be extremely light-hearted. It it's brilliant as a way of channeling humor. It can also be used for very, very serious purposes. Let's give you an example of the funny side of the hashtag. Uh, just a couple of days ago, a UKIP counselor hilariously misidentified Westminster Cathedral as a mosque. So immediately a hashtag was born, things that are not mosques. So people use that hashtag to share pictures of things like uh, the Eiffel Tower, things like the O2, uh, Kate Moss, mosquitoes, things that are not mosques. And it sounds, it was silly, but it was like an immediate trigger for so much uh, humor and uh, creativity. Hashtags can actually have a very serious purpose as well. So if you look at a huge movement for social justice like Occupy Wall Street, that movement was given focus and velocity and significance by the use of that hashtag. And what hashtags do is they focus the world's attention on one topic, on one issue. You could also have terrible hashtags. Some people just get hashtags completely wrong, especially politicians. David Cameron and George Osborne for months now have been hammering away at this terrible hashtag which is long-term economic plan. Anyone who uses Twitter knows that that is a useless hashtag because it's too long, it's unwieldy, a hashtag needs to be short and punchy. I'm Luke Lewis, Editor-in-Chief of BuzzFeed UK and this was my instant beginner's guide to hashtags. Well, Chris Messina, the inventor of the Twitter hashtag, joins us from San Francisco. Good evening. Um, for you, um, what do you think are the ingredients of a successful hashtag? I mean, how did you just, you, you had this blinding moment that this would actually make people coalesce around a particular thing. I wouldn't call it blinding. Uh, it was more sort of an accidental sort of trip over uh, a very simple idea. Um, it was more like I wanted a simple way for groups to form on Twitter that didn't require me to really think. And so I made this proposal and um, there was a lot of skepticism in the beginning. But once I started using them and encouraging my friends to do the same and copying me, it kind of just grew organically. Right. And it's, it's been seven years now. But can you, it's been seven years, but can you cast your mind back to a kind of perfect, early, great hashtag application? Yeah, you know, the first time where it was used for news um, context was during a, a wildfire in San Diego. My friend Nate Ritter was in San Diego reporting on this using Twitter, one of the first examples of citizen journalism using Twitter. And, um, I convinced him to use the hashtag San Diego Fire, and he was able to spread a lot of useful information to a lot of people, and that model has been copied ever since. But that is obviously a, a, a very good use of Twitter. Now, of course, you know, for good or ill, Twitter is the disseminator of lots of information and the gatherer of lots of information, particular groups, and we've seen it used for ill as well, haven't we? Uh, for sure, but that's true of all social media and all publishing platforms that have ever existed. If you take to one side, you've got the idea of how it sparks a, a protest movement, how it makes people coalesce around a particular moment. It also has a much more mainstream application, which perhaps you're not quite so keen on, which is simply as a marketing tool. I mean, every single corporation in the world now uses the hashtag. Yeah, I think that's right. But I still think that social media is this amazing open marketplace where ideally the best content rises. Of course, companies can pay and sponsor to get their content shown to social media users, but the fact that it's a more open marketplace than, for example, TV even, um, means that we've actually come a long way and that companies now have to come to our turf mm -hmm. to have conversations. So it's just not as good to have a decent hashtag. You actually have to have some kind of um, you know, creativity behind it. So what, yeah. you know, what, what are the ingredients of a perfect hashtag then? I think the best ones are very simple, they're very straightforward, and oftentimes the best thing is to join a conversation rather than try to take it over or to, you know, as the example that was given earlier was pointed out, not make them too long or too unwieldy. That is a brilliant tool. Here you are, the creator of it, and you have made a penny from it. It's going to hashtag fail. <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a way, but the change to culture and the contribution to culture I think is really important, and that actually is something that I'm very proud of. Jim thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you.